Well, I always hear the discussion about morality, and I've actually been having a discussion with my brother about, you know, this whole thing, and mm -hmm. and he obviously has a lot of objections to my atheism, but, you know, I always find it difficult to talk about morality, and Matt, I know that you've discussed about morality probably more than one time or two, but... <sighs> yeah. um, more than once today. It's, uh, it, <laughs> it's something that always seems to come up, and I... I never have an answer for anything with regards to morality. Um, like what? But, what what's, a, what's a question that you don't think you have an answer for? Um, well, when I'm speaking with my older brother, it's always about, you know, things that happen in the Bible that he tells me context is always important and I have to look at the time and I don't see that as beneficial because if it's wrong to do something, it doesn't matter when it happened. It should just be wrong irregardless of the time. No, absolutely. You're absolutely but, right. Um, you can't justify... Um, I know, Matt's your favorite uh, example is slavery in the Bible. That's right? the one I go to most and, of the time. And, and you're absolutely right, too, because... Well, no, I'm not going to take your point. Go ahead if you want to present it. No, it's fine. Um, so the, the big thing, Nick, is... Um, when, when they say that you have to look at it in the context and you have to look at it at the time... Um, I, I think you're you're starting exactly down the right track, which is okay. Please explain to me under what time and what context would it be moral to own another person? Under what time and what context would it be okay to say that a rape victim has to marry the rapist? How, how is that in any way a, a good thing? How could it ever be a good thing? And and if they the most common line that you'll go down is well, God had to talk to these people in terms that they understood. This was a, you know, an archaic society. Uh, slavery was the norm, so he had to, you know, like gradually soften slavery with the goal of getting rid of it. And that's patently absurd. How yeah. weak ass is their God? If he can tell you not to eat shellfish and mixed fabrics, certainly he can tell you not to own people. Yeah. Right. They, what kind of weak ass yeah, God I, are they worshiping that can't tell you? That, you know, hey, he's going to give you all the instructions about right and wrong, but on this one big thing, it's just too complicated for people to understand. Uh, so he's just going to let them keep having slaves and kind of gradually soften it. Does that make more sense in the context that there is a God who's teaching people about morality, or does it make context in the sense that here's a bunch of people who don't have the first clue about what we understand about morality, um, who are just making excuses for their own behavior? and then attributing it to a god. I, I know which one sounds more plausible to me. Have, uh, have you heard the excuse of, well, where else would these slaves go? You know, they have nothing and... Well, you, what difference does that make? Yeah, and, and yeah, you, no, also, I, you I also heard bullshit arguments. Either, but. You also heard uh, bullshit responses like that after uh, slavery was made illegal in the United States, right? You know, oh, the slaves right. need their masters. Well, that's just, that's absolutely ridiculous and that is absolutely immoral. Um, and there's no point where your brother, in this case, is going to sit up and say, gotcha. I mean, you're absolutely right, right to be, it, be comfortable in standing on the point that there are immoral things in there and you should be able to point them out. And if not, um, I always say, use it as an example to model that it's okay not to know and look it up. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, that you really can't get too much further than that. Um, Nick. Uh, I, I'm, show, I'm seeing in the notes that you had a, another question. Um, yeah, so I love, what do you got? I love the topics on the show. I always enjoy the discussions about morality and everything, but the, my, my older brother, is, uh, he's a, a, a scientific mind, and you know I had a very long conversation with him, and one of his large fractures for why he believes is because of the second law of thermodynamics, and I just thought, well, that's sort of a strange thing to bring up, yeah, and I, I know the topic of morality comes up an awful lot when discussing, you know, beliefs or non-beliefs. But have you ever run into arguments from scientific standards of why people believe of of closed systems and entropy and all this other stuff? Yes. Yeah, it, it's actually so. The second law has actually become kind of a joke because it's only, you know, young Earth creationists would, would use it for a while, and I believe. Um, Answers in Genesis or one of those sites has a list of arguments they don't think Christians should use anymore. Stuff like the level of dust on the moon is just not high enough for, for old earth. Nice. So they go through all these. I'm pretty sure that the, the laws relating to the second law of thermodynamics uh, are also listed there as arguments. That, I, I could be wrong about that. But I don't know how you get to, therefore, there must be a God. Because 
at best with any arguments from a scientific standpoint about thermodynamics, if you find something about a scientific understanding of the universe that conflicts with something else, mm -hmm. you don't get to just say, ah, well, therefore the answer is God. Um, it's like if evolution were, were shown to be wrong today, that does not mean that creationism is true. No. You actually actually have, have mm -hmm. to offer positive evidence for creationism sufficient to justify belief. Well, and it also has to meet um, all of the different um, predictive qualities that the other theory had. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take a look at the theory of evolution, um, it has predicted different things across um, archaeology, biology, tons of different fields, and your counter explanation, the creationist explanation, has to be able to account for all of that too. And I mean, the, the famous joke about this is that, and I don't know if this actually happened or if it's kind of a glurge urban legend type thing, but uh, there was like a, a preacher who was using the second law of thermodynamics and was like, you know, just take a look around at the earth and it couldn't be that old because you would need a big, huge source of constant energy being <laughs> applied to the earth. And, you know, of course, there's the sun right there. Uh, but I, is there a specific about you know, your brother's use of this that is, I don't know, troubling? By the way, uh, if you're not getting good answers from us, go to talkorigins.org and there's an index to creationist claims with scientific responses to each of these things, including, I think, second law thermodynamics. Hmm. Well, no, the main thing that, you know, was his contention was the thought of, well, is the entire universe a closed system? And, you know, I try to look locally at just the Sun-Earth system and I, I know it's not closed and yeah. it just feels weird to try to apply something that only seems to hold true for closed systems and somehow apply it to systems that are open. And I and you can, like you can said, use I it. can't see the connection of, therefore, God must exist because of this. So, and, and I'll probably talk with, I'm doing an event with Lawrence Cross next weekend, and I'll, I may talk about this a little bit too, so thanks for prompting a discussion. But one of the things is, whether or not the universe is open or closed is irrelevant to whether or not our local system is open or closed. In just the same way that whether or not our local system is open or closed is irrelevant to whether or not the plumbing system in this house, in this building, is open or closed. So if it only applies to closed systems, and you at least know that this system is closed, then it applies. Whether or not it applies to the entire universe is a separate issue. Uh, you don't get to kind of extrapolate and just go, well, mm -hmm. th 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 you do the same thing with, um, with the first cause arguments. Well, there had to be something before this. Well, there had to be something that caused this. Well, there had to be something that caused yeah. this. And they, they put a stop in it as, well, therefore, there is God who is this uncaused cause. And that is actually one step further than we can rationally justify. Uh, at best, we should say we don't know what the actual cause of the universe is and that there may be a multiverse or whatever that is essentially eternal um, so that we don't have to keep going. But Carl Sagan famously, or maybe not so famously, pointed out in response to this attempt from God believers to, to, to put a stop at God because they argue that an infinite regress is impossible, and if you don't put a stop here, you would just have to keep going. And Sagan replied, why? Why, why, why not keep going? You know, just what, what, the pen that yeah. we should be sticking in it is not, we don't know, therefore God did it. The pen we should be sticking in it is, we don't know, so let's keep looking. Yep. You can't, you, 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 I, I think you said it perfectly. You can't, you can't explain a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. You can't just say that, you know, my special invisible friend did it and, you know, that's all. Um, yeah, and, and you do get a whole bunch of other um, pseudo y sounding type explanations that people use to try and prove the existence of God. Um, I, you, talking about young earth creationism is absolutely one of them. Um, you know, the, the, the fun thing is, is if you are talking to your brother about it, get a, hop on a computer, say, let's look it up together. And um, that'll take this, the wind right out of his sails. Really. There's two, there's two <laughs> other quickie options. 
Uh, one is your brother could call in to either talk heathen or atheist experience. Um, and then you don't necessarily have to feel on the spot for a discussion. Somebody else can. Although, we're not experts. Uh, no. And he can dismiss us. Here's the thing. Let's assume that the, that the second law of thermodynamics could be used in a way to demonstrate the existence of a god. Let's assume that he's right about that. Don't you think that somebody would have done that and gotten a Nobel Prize, that they'd have won the Templeton Foundation Prize, that they would have won every major award for demonstrating how the second law of thermodynamics demonstrates that there must in fact be a God, and then we wouldn't be having these conversations at all. There'd be no reason to call in, um, and yet the bulk of scientists uh, do not or the bulk of you know National Academy of Sciences don't believe in a personal God. Uh, most of them that have an understanding and expertise in here don't believe that a God can or should be appealed to as an explanation for an unknown. And the only answer that that someone I'm not going to say your brother would come up with this, but the only answer that I've heard is that there's some massive scientific conspiracy to shut down real proofs of God. And that's bizarre considering the overwhelming majority of people on the planet believe in a God of some form. And if there was proof for it, yes, you would still have deniers, just like you'd have deniers of you know, climate change or whether or not Water vaccines things. cause autism or whatever. You're always going to have moon landing. You're going to have people who deny everything. Uh, but that, th the idea that everybody involved with the Templeton Foundation who are actually working to prove that God exists... Uh, are in on this conspiracy so much that they wouldn't give an award. Hold on, you're, you're not in on the conspiracy? I am not. You, we, 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 we gotta get you a check, man. I mean, when, when you get important enough, maybe you, you get famous. It enough. won't matter because I'm not a lizard track. person, and the lizard people control everything. Got it, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that, that's a little helpful, Nick. I, I've, I've used this kind uh -oh. of as a gotcha in the past of, you know, where's the Nobel Prize for proving that God exists? And if it was just something as simple as saying, ah, we all agree on the second law of thermodynamics, we all agree on whether or not we're in an open or closed system, therefore we can make this claim, and therefore God. Uh, man, if it's, if it's that simple that, you know... But it never is. They're, they're, they're going to hold on to it as long as they think it's useful and then ditch it maybe. for the next thing. That's my experience. So, some of them, some yeah. of them will give it up. Um, Hopefully. But we'll see. Yeah, Nick, um, if there's nothing else, I think we're going to head on to the next caller. Well, I yeah, appreciate you taking my call. I'm glad I got a chance to call in. Uh, Eric, it's nice to see you're, you're out of Jamie's basement. Um, I'm Dude, glad you escaped from there. It's stuffy um, in there. I, you know <laughs> and, what? The, uh, I, and, he's, that, that bastard is hiding from me right now. <laughs> he, I'm, I'm, I'm say say hi to Jamie for me. Um, Matt, I can't appreciate you know what you've at least done for me. Uh, I'm sure hopefully I'll get a chance to talk to you more in the future. Um, yeah, I just, I love talking to you guys, listening to you guys, and I'm sure I'll call back again. Well, Thank keep you. an eye on Facebook because I'm, I'm doing like a multi-part world tour. The first eight, we're doing eight stops in Canada, and then we're going to do either a Europe or U.S. leg, uh, and Denver may be among the cities. So keep an eye on, on that. Awesome. Definitely. And um, also keep in touch with the, uh, with the show, too. We do have a pretty active group. I'm looking at the live chat, and it is blowing up. Um, hop on the Reddit. I should um, look. Maybe there'd be people on there saying, Matt's an idiot. Reddit.com slash r slash talkheathen. Uh, talkheathen.com. You can look up Talkheathen on Facebook. And um, I really want to get those commu uh, that community aspect going. I want people to be able to contribute and help, especially if they see something that I do that's really dumb. And, uh, and want to counter it. I um, started describing a fallacy that was absolutely wrong on episode two, I think. And um, someone right away online was like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? I was like, I, I, I screwed up. So this will make you so, feel better. This is actually one of my favorite um, anecdotes of all time. Russell and I were doing an episode of The Atheist Experience, and a guy calls in and asks us, what do you guys think about the ontological argument? And Russell and I spent probably 10 or 15 minutes, if I had to guess, between the two of us, just going through in great detail and demolishing the cosmological arguments. <laughs> and we got to the end, and he was like, you know, that's great and all, but that's, that's not, not the ontological argument. And we were like, what, what, what? <laughs> and I don't know, you know, it's not like it's something that we didn't know. We, you know, both of us had studied these. It happens. Yeah. It, we, are, we are fallible 
Um, and, and, and the funny thing is, is uh, when I read it, I thought, oh man, this dude's pissed. And I replied, hey, you know what? You're absolutely right. I was wrong. They replied back, hey, awesome, cool, fan of the show, you know? But, <laughs> so you never really know. Um, but Nick, we'd absolutely love to have you in the community. So keep in yeah, touch, right, well, man? I, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I recently had just been more open about my atheism, and you guys have all helped a lot with, with me getting there. So I appreciate the call. Rock on. Thank you, man. Happy to hear it. Yeah, you too. You know, I am, it actually was the atheist experience that convinced me to be an out atheist. Awesome. It was. It was uh, seeing the show and realizing that I was in a safe enough spot in my life that um, I should kind of be an example of what is an atheist, right? We're not baby-eating monsters. Well, not all of us are baby-eating monsters. Um, and people should actually get to see that that's okay. You know, we can still be neighbors. We can still be friends. And um, we can and are good people most of the time, and that's, that's worth it. So I at a minimum, absolutely appreciate what we're, you At a minimum, we're as good or bad as any other demographic. Yeah. Uh, we may be better in some areas. Well, we may be worse in some areas. True but enough. we're people where, you know, it's, well, it's funny to me to watch, you know, I hear from people who have had difficulties with their families, uh, which I find kind of sad. Uh, on one level, I kind of get it that, um, like, I could never put my religious belief above my love for family, children, et cetera, um, specifically children. But it's, and I don't even have any children, so maybe, maybe I wouldn't. Jamie is your son, isn't he? Yeah, adopted. Oh, okay, okay. And not, <laughs> and not in any legal sense where he's entitled to any of my stuff should I die. No, he just... Uh... Just, you know... He's, he's just there. He's right? adorable. He we, we like to have him around. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta tell him to do his laundry. Clean your room. Where's the shirt? Inside out. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that's really... 